Hey everyone, so if you watched my first video on hiking and how to develop a strategy, I mentioned I was gonna do a workout video. That's what I'm here doing now. So I'm gonna start with a little warm up. I'm gonna post on screen what exactly I'm gonna be doing. As I have each exercise on screen, I'm gonna do a voiceover of what I'm doing, why I'm doing it in a specific way, try to give you some justification. I hope this all makes sense. I hope you guys enjoy it. So let me uh, get right to it. Today's workout, we're gonna be focusing on lower body. So let's take a look at the workout here. Now you can see it's a very simple program to follow uh, with having one A, then we move to two A and two B. As I go through this, I'll explain it a little bit more and you'll catch on pretty quickly. It's a very simple, easy way to write a workout program. I definitely recommend it if you're writing your own program. So let's go through this. For those of you who didn't see my first video, it is linked in the description, the very first thing you see but that video laid out three principles about hiking, trying to create a better hiker, and those principles revolved around improving strength, endurance, and stability. As I show my exercises, I'm gonna break down the reasons why we chose these specific movements, and also explain how these are gonna help uh, create a better hiker and add to our hiking abilities. Our first exercise will be squats. We will be working on our glutes, quads, along with hamstrings. I start with two warm-up sets that I'm not counting as my working sets. So I wanna treat squats basically as my main strength movement here. You can get stronger lifting lighter weights, but the largest strength gains are typically seen when people are lifting heavier weights for lower reps. So therefore, I'm gonna be doing three sets at 245 pounds for five reps and please don't get stuck worrying about how heavy the weight is you're lifting. Uh, the form is so much more important. If you can't do the form correctly, lighten the weight and work on the form. Now I'm allowing three minutes between each set. This allows time for the ATP to replenish in our cells, allowing us to exhaust our muscle to a larger extent. So now we're gonna go through this three times and move on to 2A and 2B. So 2A is going to be a split squat, which targets a lot of the same muscles as the regular squat that we just did, but here there's a stability aspect involved. This movement reminds me a lot of a lunge, so what we're gonna do is take a step forward, post our back foot on the bench, and squat down. Simple enough, yet it's harder than it looks. Now when we do a single-legged movement like this, what we're doing is called a unilateral movement. This type of training allows us to correct imbalances and avoid relying on our dominant side to pick up the slack in the movement. Moving to 2A, which is the side step, this allows us to target our glute medius muscle, which has a larger role in stability during our gait, which is basically our walking pattern. You'll notice going forward, my rest time is less than what I did during the squats. This is for a few reasons because we aren't necessarily concerned with building strength through these movements, although we will be to some degree. We're also targeting endurance with higher reps, balance, and size. Now we'll do this three times and move on. All right, now we're into 3A and 3B. 3A is gonna be a step up. This movement is very glute dominant, and in another video I did that was called Best Glute Exercises, the step up showed the highest EMG data, which basically is muscle activation levels compared to all other glute exercises. This obviously will be super beneficial for those glutes then and also for our quads and hamstrings. While hiking, this movement will be very similar to us stepping over any obstacles that we might encounter along the way. Now, I normally wouldn't use this high of a box. I would recommend starting a lot lower, but I just thought I would use a high box for this uh, workout. 3B is a simple seated calf raise. You will see that we have two variations of calf raise in the workouts. A seated calf raise hits our gastrocnemius muscle. Um, I'm pretty sure I pronounced that right. Uh, either way, while standing, we hit our soleus muscle, which is a two joint muscle, which is more utilized when the knee is straight. This really isn't critical to know. Uh, just take away from it that a seated calf raise and a standing calf raise hit our muscles differently in our calves, so just make sure you plan your workout accordingly. 
We'll go through that three times and move on. Going pretty good so far. We are 44 minutes in, 122 beats per minute on the heart rate. So let's uh, let's keep this going. 4A and 4B. Hip thrust first. So this is a great movement for strengthening our glutes, and we involve our hamstrings to a certain degree. You can see I'm using one leg. So as we know, that makes this movement a unilateral movement yes so those balance principles that we discussed earlier apply here now 4b is our standing calf raise which we talked about with uh, the seated calf raise now typically the more of an uphill climb you'll have or hike you'll have you'll be using your calves a little bit more so like i said before with planning your workout accordingly if you're doing a lot of uphill movement then probably working in a good amount of calves will be ideal All right, now to our final movement. 5A is a simple lunge here to try to finish up our lower body muscles. Uh, this is just an additional movement. It works a lot of the same muscles we've been the entire workout. With 5B being a stiff-legged deadlift, I'm not using that much weight here because I am pretty exhausted towards the end of this workout, but this allows us to target our hamstrings, erector spinae muscle in our back, and some of our glutes without using our quads, which have been active a lot throughout this workout. Um, I didn't want to quit early. I did not quit early. I did all three sets, but I did not record. I actually did my first two sets without recording, and I was not going to do an extra two just to fit it in the video. So I did finish these sets. All right, that's it for voiceover, Adam. Let's go back to uh, camera, Adam. All right, guys, so there you have it. We were just about an hour into the workout. We're gonna finish up with a little stretch. And then that's it. Thanks for checking out the video. Hopefully you learned uh, something new. Maybe saw a new technique, maybe understood a little bit about uh, unilateral movement. For any of you who actually watch the channel, this is my first little vlog video like this. So if you enjoyed it, just let me know in the comments what you guys think. Uh, maybe I'll do a few more like this and show maybe some shoulder, chest, back, work out something. Uh, but thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time.